Hi, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create bar charts and pie charts like this in ArcGIS Pro. So to demonstrate this, I'm actually going to use a couple of uh, different data sets which you will also have access to. If you simply head down to the description of this video, you'll be able to find the link to download the data sets that I'm going to use for this tutorial so that you guys can just follow along and see whether you can regenerate the charts that I'm going to show you in this tutorial. So first of all, I have gone ahead and linked the corresponding folder in which I have kept these shape files. When you download it, this is how it's going to look. We basically have three different data sets and uh, simply by right clicking over here and connecting my data folder to ArcGIS Pro using the catalog pane, I have sort of establish this link and I have three different shape files over here which I'll be using for this tutorial. I'm going to get started with this mhi.shp dataset which uh, basically stands for median household income. So I'm just going to drag this and uh, drop it into my workspace and you'll be able to see the shape file looking like this. It's basically showing the state level administrative divisions of the United States and if you were to right click over here and open up the attribute table You'll be able to see the corresponding names of the states and we have the corresponding median household income data for years 2022, 2021 and year 2020. So what I'm trying to do is I'm actually trying to get this information over to my map and have it display as a bar chart. So for each state, I would be able to see how the median household income basically is expected to vary. And to do that, you have to right click over here and head over to symbology because essentially what we're trying to do is actually trying to change our primary symbology from being a single symbol. That's what it is right now. You can see all the states are represented in one uniform color. And instead of using single symbol, now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and select charts like this. And as soon as you do that, you will see an option to select the chart type right over here. Now we have a couple of different options. We have bar chart, pie chart, and stack chart. So in the first part of this tutorial, I'm actually going to deal with just bar charts. So I'm not really going to make any changes in my selection, or I'm just going to go ahead and select this one. And with that, you will be able to see an option to actually add different fields. Now, if you can recall the original attribute table, we actually had a couple of different fields, isn't it? Which tells us about the median household income corresponding to years 2020, 2021 and 2022. So by default, you can see one of the fields has been added and all you have to do is just go ahead and add the rest of the fields. Or in case if you want to just compare two fields, that's fine as well. Let's say if you just want to have your bar chart just to compare the values of 2022 and maybe 2020. Well, in that case, you can see that automatically the bar chart uh, right over here gets updated with two different uh, columns or two different bars and the corresponding colors can be seen uh, right over here. Of course, if you're not really happy with the default colors, you can go ahead and make changes. I'm just going to select maybe a different color. Let's go with red, click on apply and that should change accordingly. And you can head back by clicking right over here. And to show the values of year 2020, we can maybe go ahead and select a different color if you wish to do so. I'm just going to go with a blue color like this. And that should get updated instantly. And for some reason, if you feel like you want to add the remaining column as well, you can actually go ahead and do that as well. 2021, I'm just going to stick with the default color that gets assigned. And some of the changes that you can do with regard to the appearance, the bar width, if you increase this, you can see that the width of the bars will increase in response to that change, which may be appropriate in certain instances, but I think I'm just going to stick with around six or seven. Let's just go with six. And of course the bar length can be changed as well. If you increase this, you can see that the length of the bars are going to increase as well. And something that I just noticed is that you can actually reorganize the arrangement of the bars. So if you look at the pattern right over here, in red color, we see the data of 2022. And followed by that, we see the data of 2020 and then 2021. But I just want to maintain the consistency. So I'm just going to maybe first select this row and, well, 
get rid of that and then I'm going to make sure that I select 2021 over here and then come back to 2020 because that way we actually preserve the order and even if you try to look at the bus itself you will see how the median household income has grown as we move from 2020 all the way to 2022. Now I think I'm actually going to slightly increase the bar width yeah, to be something like this. And uh, another thing that you can do is actually change the spacing between the bars in case if you want to have some space. But I actually do prefer the bars to be stacked together like this. But in case if you want some space, you can adjust that by increasing this parameter right over here. And to be honest, that's not too bad. And if you want to just uh, have the axis, you can activate this right over here. Now, another cool option that I actually came across is the ability to have the bars display in sort of a 3D manner. Under this display options, if you click on display in 3D, then the bars are actually going to appear in this sort of a 3D outlook, which is pretty nice as well. And accordingly, you get one parameter that you can play around in terms of uh, changing its thickness. You can actually just play around and see how it affects. I'm just going to leave it somewhere around here. So this is how you actually change the symbology to have information displayed as bar charts corresponding to each state or each polygon in this case. And in case if you still want to have maybe the boundaries of the states to be a bit more prominent, actually what you can do is you can maybe import a separate version of this layer again from the original data set. If you head back to the catalog pane from here, what I can do is I can actually again drag this and drop it over here as a separate layer and this time if I click on this I would be able to actually access the symbology again and what I could do is I could actually select no color as the fill color and maybe select something like black and increase the outline width just a little bit like this and click on apply so that we would still have the outer boundary of the states like this. Now if you actually check the coordinate system of your project by heading over to this map and if you head over to properties you'll be able to see that well the coordinate reference system that it's currently using is WGS 1984 geographic coordinate reference system but if you would like to have the outlook of something like Google Maps you can actually switch to this projection which is WGS 1984 web mercator projection click on apply and that should kind of stretch the map a little bit to give it the outlook that we are used to seeing from map services like Google Maps or Microsoft Bing Maps because all of them are actually using this 1984 Web Mercator type projection. All right, so this is how to create bar charts and now let's learn how to create pie charts. And with that, I would also like to maybe remind you guys that we first have to think what sort of information is suitable to be represented as bar charts and what kind of information is better suited to be represented as, as pie charts. Now, for something like this, where we have the median household income for different years, and if you were to kind of combine all of this information together just to come up with one value, well, for median household income, it doesn't really make sense to do that because we, we are just interested in having values corresponding to each year like this. But the second data set that I'm going to use is actually the population of different states in Germany. Now we can drag it and drop it over here. And if I right click and say zoom to layer, it's just going to zoom me into Germany just like this. And if you try to inspect the attribute table, well, what you can see is basically the name of each state. And in terms of the actual information, what we have is the number of Germans and the number of foreigners living in each state. Now, in this case, if you were to actually add up these two together, then that basically tells us the total population of each state. And for this type of a data set, it actually makes sense to use something like a pie chart because the combined value does express some meaningful information about each state in this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to right click over here and head to symbology and similar to what we did before we can head right over to charts and instead of bar chart this time we're actually interested in creating a pie chart and 
as we can see from the attribute table, well, the two properties that we would like to kind of represent side by side or as components of the pi is actually going to be the number of Germans and the number of foreigners in each state. So you can see Germans have already been added by default. And all you have to do is just go ahead and add the other one, which is foreigners. And you probably might have to go ahead and change the colors to your liking. I'm just going to go with a pink color like this. And for foreigners, maybe let's go with a shade of a green color like this. So with that, you can see for each state, we can see how the distribution of foreigners and Germans happen to be in terms of their population numbers. In case if you happen to mix up the colors, you can always refer back to the legend right over here. You can see the number of Germans are represented in pink color and the foreigners are represented in green color like this. Now, when it comes to the appearance settings, well, you can pretty much do the same stuff that we discussed uh, under bar charts. And one of those things would be changing the size of the chart. So it's a direct uh, parameter. You can see if you increase the size like this, well, the size of every pie chart increases. Over here, we have something quite interesting. We have a parameter called size type. And by default, it's set to be fixed, which means every pie chart will actually have the same size. And if you were to go ahead and change the size, it's going to get applied uniformly to all the pie charts for each state. But if you decide to go with something like, let's say, sum of selected fields, well, in that case, you can see that we have selected two different fields and the size distribution is actually going to get proportional to the total population of each state because it's actually going to take the sum of the selected fields. So this actually gives us directly an indication about how the total population vary across each of these different states in Germany. So you instantly do notice that this pie chart right over here stands out to be the biggest one among the others, which actually tells us that this state is the one that's having the highest number of people. But at the same time, it still retains the corresponding division between the number of Germans and foreigners accordingly for each state as well. Similarly, if you actually go ahead and open up this display options, you also get the option to, well, represent the pie charts in a 3D manner like this. And you can control what you call the thickness of the pie chart and the tilt like this using these sliders. In case if you don't want the 3D outlook to stand out quite a lot, you can actually have the tilt lowered like this. But in case if you want it to be quite prominent, well, then you can have the chart oriented in this kind of a manner. So guys, this is how you create pie charts. And in case if you want to sort of properly highlight the state boundaries again, what I could do is I could actually go ahead and re-import this layer back as a separate layer and then take care of it well separately like this similar to how we did things before so it actually highlights state boundaries like this which makes things uh, stand out a bit more and if you want to take attention out from the background map just a little bit what you could do is you could actually well click on this base map layers open up this tile layer and well increase the transparency just a little bit like this and do that for the other layer as well so that the attention from the background will be taken away and it'll be directed to the map that you just created which shows the population division between Germans and foreigners at state level across Germany. So I think we pretty much explored uh, a lot of things that we can do when it comes to creating bar charts and pie charts on maps and uh, if you guys can recall I did have one more data set which is actually an energy production data set like this if i drag it and well try to open up the attribute table this is something that actually shows the energy production of each state in terms of percentage so for example let's say if you are looking at kansas in terms of its total energy production five percent is accounted by gas 33 percent accounted by coal 14 percent by nuclear power 48% wind power and the rest remains to be zero. So it's just basically showing the percentages of uh, energy production in terms of different energy types. And I think you guys would agree that uh, showing this type of information 
using a pie chart would result in much better type of representation rather than using something like a bar chart. So I'm just going to leave this to you guys to experiment around and see what sort of a pie chart you could generate for this energy production data set as well for the US. All right, with that, we are going to wrap up this tutorial. Hope the steps were clear for you guys. If you do have any questions, you can add a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And I'll see you guys again with another tutorial soon.